every man a king, for you can be a millionaire. When Huey Long sang the song that championed the little man, Edwin Edwards was growing up in rural central Louisiana. Born in 1927, the year of the Great Flood, Edwards' father was a sharecropper, his mother a midwife, and Huey Long's populist views of sharing the wealth hit home. In 1949, Edwards graduated from high school and married his sweetheart, Elaine. After LSU Law School, he moved to Crowley and started a law firm. Many of his early clients were the poor and underprivileged in Cajun country, and he practiced in both English and French. It was in Crowley that Edwards got his first taste of politics. In 1954, he was elected to the city council and later to the state senate and to Congress in 1965. But he had his eye on the state's highest job. Will you help me? Will we do it? And in 1972, Edwin Edwards realized his dream. He was governor of Louisiana at the age of 44. De l'état de la Louisiane. De l'état de la Louisiane. During his first term, the first ethical questions would arise. He was investigated by grand juries looking at whether he sold high-level state jobs for political contributions, but no charges were ever filed, and he breezed to a second term in 1975. Edwards quickly developed a reputation as a high-stakes gambler. He was seen often at casinos in Las Vegas. I don't have a compulsion to gamble, and I don't gamble for fun. You know, I gamble because from time to time I can make money at it. With me, it's a business. The public liked his flamboyant style, but the popular governor was also getting things done. He oversaw the passage of a new state constitution and changed the way the state taxed oil companies. The money poured in and the state soon had a billion dollars in its rainy day fund. The good times were rolling. So there was very little political fallout when there was another investigation, this one in 1976. Edwards admitted his wife, Elaine, took $20,000 from lobbyists for the Korean rice industry when he was in Congress. After two terms in office, Edwards was required to leave the governor's mansion, and Dave Treen took over. But in 1983, Edwin Edwards was back. So help me God. Congratulations. In a TV debate with Treen, the former governor was in rare form. Why do you keep talking out of both sides of your mouth on the professional improvement program? So a person with nothing between his ears, such as you, can understand what I'm saying. Edwards won his third term in a landslide. Eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we go to work. To celebrate, the flamboyant governor took supporters on a victory trip to Paris. Tickets were $10,000 a person. But the happy times in Louisiana were coming to an end. The price of oil was plummeting. The governor, his brother, and six others were indicted on federal racketeering charges. The feds accused them of selling state permits to build new hospitals. Throughout two long trials, the governor seemed fearless and never lost his trademark sense of humor. Do you have anything to hide? Oh, yes, but not in connection with this investigation. <laughs> in the end, Edwards was acquitted, but it came at a high price. His popularity was at an all-time low, and when it appeared certain he would not win re-election against challenger Buddy Romer, Edwards conceded the race rather than facing the humiliation of losing at the polls. There were also personal changes for Edwards after 40 years of marriage. He and his longtime first lady started separate lives. Then in 1991, Edwards resurfaced taking on David Duke in a comeback that many voters considered a choice between two evils. I want to win this election, but I want to win it big because I want to send a message to the rest of the nation that Louisiana does not stand for the principles of my opponent. Edwards won his unprecedented fourth term, but he shocked colleagues and the people of Louisiana with this dramatic announcement just two years into his term. I have made a firm decision not to seek a fifth term. Oh. <laughs> By that time, the governor in his 60s had married again. 26-year-old Candy Piku and said he was ready to settle down. But once again, the feds were on his heels. Arrogance, That's good. corruption of staggering proportions at the highest level of our state government. This time, Edwards, his son Stephen, and a state senator and four others were accused of a series of schemes to manipulate riverboat casino licenses. Edwards faced 28 counts of racketeering and fraud. It's less than I expected, 
uh, I'm not charged at all with the Oklahoma City bombing. After nearly five months of testimony in May of 2000, guilty verdicts came back against Edwin Edwards and his son Stephen and three co-defendants. The federal government finally hit its target. The Chinese have a saying that if you sit by the river long enough, the dead body of your enemy will come floating down the river. I suppose the feds sat by the river long enough, so here comes my body. Edwards vowed to fight the conviction with an appeal focusing on the controversial removal of a juror. For more than two years, he stayed out of jail while appealing his case, but in the end, the courts upheld the verdict and Edwards was off to prison. I'll see you at some point in the future, where and when, I don't know. When we did see Edwards again eight years later, it was almost like he'd never left. He made a splash like only Edwin Edwards could do, doing interviews, writing a memoir, and making public appearances where he said people often urged him to run for office again. There's no way I can express my gratitude to how nice people have been to me and how encouraged they have made me and uh, made me feel like if I could run, I'd have an excellent chance of winning. While in prison, Edwards found love again in Trina Grimes Scott. I caught her in a weak moment. <laughs> she struck up a relationship by writing to Edwards, then visiting him regularly at prison. The 51-year age difference turned heads, but that was nothing new for Edwin Edwards. Their 2011 marriage, one day before his 84th birthday, was followed by a reality TV show on cable called The Governor's Wife. In August of 2013, Trina gave Edwin, then 86, his fifth child, Eli Wallace Edwards. Trina has already made a little shirt that says EWE for Governor 2043. He joked about his son's political future and even tried to stage his own comeback. His conviction meant he couldn't run for governor, but in 2014 he ran for Congress in a district that includes the Baton Rouge area. I like to tell people that one thing is certain, I can't make things in, in Congress any worse. In the end, analysts said Edwards' personality and popularity just couldn't overcome his past. He never claimed to be a saint, but he always maintained he was never guilty of the charges that sent him to prison. You don't think you're a crook, do you? No, I know I'm not a crook. Edwards knew he was a controversial figure, but deep down he always felt like he was the governor for the people. Well, the difference is those that know me love me, those that don't know me hate me. They, they form an opinion based upon what somebody told them or what they heard or an opinion based on my policies. There are a lot of people who don't like me because I have an empathy for the poor, the disadvantaged, old people, sick children, and those that need help from government, and I never hit it. I think government is there to serve people.